The Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources, FMPR, is to many Nigerians a first-class entity supervising and administering a group of departments and agencies whose oil and gas engagements have become the single greatest driver of the country's economy. A simple nugget from the ministry's website states, and we quote, The creation of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources was necessitated by the need to develop and implement sound policies that will serve as a backbone for the rapid development of the then burgeoning oil and gas sector. End of quote. This explains why the ministry, which is under the direct supervision of Mr. President himself, Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, continues to either make or attract the headlines in the continuing effort to take Nigerian oil and gas to an enviable position among modern MDAs. The president made it all clear right from the inception of his administration. If I will go back to our uh, uh, historical um, facts about uh, the petroleum industry, I think most Nigerians that are interested in uh, economic development we used to have only one refinery in Fort Harcourt with a capacity of 60,000 barrels a day. It was upgraded to 100,000 barrels. Another one was co-built in Fort Harcourt to produce 150,000 barrels a day. So Fort Harcourt alone had the capacity of 250,000 barrels a day refining capacity of Nigerian crude. Then when I was uh, serving as Commissioner of Petroleum, which is Minister under General Obasanjo, I signed the contract for Wari Refinery, another 100,000 barrels a day, and then Kaduna, 100,000 barrels a day. So we used to have a capacity of 450,000 barrels a day. And Nigerians that are following knew that um, when I went back as a head of state, uh, was um, Professor Tam W. Ross and Minister. We are exporting 100,000 barrels a day of refined product after such fine home market. I was fully really briefed by NNPC and I reminded them of what, we, what it used to be. You should know. Uh, and I asked them to please cooperate and let's quickly bounce back yes. so that um, uh, we need this money. Uh, for social services, for infrastructure. Buhari knew that to deliver a first-class job, an immediate lieutenant with first-class thinking was necessary. Many Nigerians were therefore not taken aback when erstwhile mobile top executive Emmanuel Ibe Kachiku was appointed the Honorable Minister of State in the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Ibe recalls those first days of being called upon to serve Nigeria. Uh, his Excellency President took over and appointed me. Um, first, morale was very low in the sector. Uh, we had had too many incidences of graft issues, investigations, international exposures. Um, there was just no, no, uh, no image. Um, if there was any image, it was a very negative image. That was one. Two was that we were dealing with a massive issue of militancy uh, in the South. I remember that. Um, production was at all ebbs. Uh, our uh, ability to fund our federal budget was, uh, quite frankly, um, almost near to zero. We had nothing. Um, the little savings that you had uh, was just enough barely to cover, uh, if I recall, about three months of import. Um, production was low. Um, fuel issue, fuel queues were all over the Everywhere. place. Um, you know, so the industry was really, really hot. In. Investment decision was at it nils. We had gone on for about three, four years in which there was a rigless operation in Nigeria. Nobody was bringing in risks. Oil companies were not investing. They were just basically producing for survival. Um, employment in the sector was at its lowest point. So the industry was down, um, uh, you know, for very many reasons. Of course, the price of um, crude itself internationally was, was uh, taking a very big dip. These are circumstances we met. 
first thing we needed uh, to do, obviously, uh, was first of all address the issue of the image. Uh, it took one uh, good one year and uh, of, of solid work, um, weekly uh, podcast sessions, uh, talking to staff, trying to change your mindset. Uh, began to publish their monthly accounts, uh, which they had never done before, to force everybody to focus on the fact that you have to account and, and the asset in transparency. I think that did a lot, uh, and, I, and I, I believe that the, the uh, uh, GMD who is coming after me has, you know, rolled up on that and continued on that. We recently, uh, I still serve as chairman of the board of NMPs, and recently we were glad to see that the, the push on accounting and auditing which we had taken from a 2010 backlog all the way to about 2013 before I left has now been completed. eBay is clearly happy that the few queues have been dealt with at last. But the cheerful pragmatist still makes an important point concerning the sourcing of petroleum products. There's something fundamentally wrong in the major national oil company being the one that supplies fuel to 180 million people. It's a non-starter. It's dead on arrival. So we need to find ways in which uh, private marketers find enough incentive to go back into the market and do what they're best pleased to do. Uh, so that NMPs can focus on the more important business of being able to produce uh, products and monitor the upstream sector for the country. eBay came in with a few ideas or template, which given the nature of happenings in the oil and gas sector he met, would appear radical. But not for once did the eloquent but vocal Minister of State forget to applaud the president's priority program in seeking solutions to issues in the sector. In line with this, he initiated the seven big wins, which was launched by President Muhammadu Buhari himself. But the whole idea was to position our growth track in the oil sector with a very definitive uh, journey track. Mm -hmm. And we got the president to, to launch. It was very gracious to do that. And, and, and seven big wins, seven, or seven must wins, must or whatever wins. it is. <laughs> you know, I've got to learn the, the verbiage. You know, um, largely it tracks what we must do in the refining in terms of beginning to process as opposed to uh, export crude. And that goes to both gas, uh, both. Um, petrochemicals, uh, both uh, uh, refined white and black products. Uh, it deals with the militancy issue in terms of host community issues, what we must do to engage them sufficiently and consistently and continuously in such a manner that they feel that they are part of the equation and take away and eliminate the, the sporadic uh, issues of militancy and disruptions. It goes to the issue of the business model. What must we do in terms of inflating the right policies so that investors will find they need to continue to invest. We talked of policies. How do we uh, put in some of the policies that have been discussed, never just perfected. We were able to bring out so far the um, uh, petroleum policy, the gas policy. We're almost finalizing, or we fight finalize the fiscal policy, but we're, we need to put that on a roadshow and discuss that with the, with the stakeholders and be sure we're all aligned. Uh, we're, work, we're working with the assembly in terms of the uh, governance uh, uh, PIGB, which has just been passed by both houses. Uh, there's still more to do, host community, the fiscal bills and all that. So get the right policies so that the environment is, 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 is predictable. Um, deal with infrastructure. Um, and, and so, so those are the seven big wins. that we, It was basically a, 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 you know, a journey track. This is how we're going. These are the things we need to focus on. Big elephant in the room, gas. How do we deal with gas in such a way that it can power the country, uh, provide um, uh, resources for uh, the petrochemical um, uh, sectors of, the, uh, of this business and agriculture that we need. That we, that, that we need. The Ministry of Petroleum Resources is blessed with key functionaries carefully selected to translate the nation's oil and gas dreams into sparkling reality. For the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Dr. Folashade Yemi Esson, the advent of Ibe Kachiku team players has brought about a new zeal to tackle challenges, since some of the things he asked for from his template were simply novel and clearly exciting. The Honourable Minister of State came into the Ministry um, with some new ideas which um, have been encapsulated into what we call the seven big wings. And that is what the, is driving the Ministry and all its parastatals currently. Um, the seven big wings are seven major areas where the Honorable Minister of State wants to see dramatic change um, before the end of um, 2019. 
So he has actually tasked all of us and um, we report weekly on the progress of the seven big wins to the Honorable Minister. ESO particularly mentions automation of work processes as a key component of the seven big wins being pursued. Capacity is further being enhanced, while cost effectiveness is also in the ministry's line of vision. Taking a look at the various parastatals under the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, pops up as, and we quote, an integrated oil and gas company engaged in adding value to the nation's hydrocarbon resources for the benefit of all Nigerians and other stakeholders. The statement casts a simple mentality about the activities of an organization whose existence practically defines an incontrovertible fact of Nigeria's economic life. Indeed, the mission statement of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, may be brief and straight to the point. Still, no one is likely to question the fact that it represents the huge yearning of a company that is fully aware of its equally huge obligation to a populous country totally committed to raising the standard of living of its citizenry by maximizing benefits from an abundant gift of hydrocarbons. Here's his group managing director, Dr. Mekanti Baru, on the mandate of the corporation. The major purpose of NNPC is to participate in the all value chains of the uh, oil and gas industry. And specifically, uh, we participate right from exploration through to production and refining and marketing of petroleum products. We also particularly look at sufficiency of petroleum products to the Nigerian populace to the extent that we are called the supplier of last resort. Some of the uh, strikes that we've done since we came back was to try and bring back NNPC back to its focus of seeing that we develop oil and gas, we increase reserves, we also increase producibility and to ensure that there is product all over the country. We are working assiduously to ensure that uh, production in terms of crude oil and condensates and gas continue because gas also uh, is a major issue that we found. Uh, there was always a plentiful supply of gas and there isn't enough and I'm happy to tell you doctor that uh, we have reached a point that even as I'm talking to you we are supplying gas and the power sectors are not able to, uh, able to take the gas. One of the eight power statals of the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources is the Petroleum Development Trust Fund, PTDF. The Executive Secretary of the Fund, Dr. Aliu Bello Gosau, says its mandate covers building capacities and competencies and that the scholarships which individuals usually associate it with are just one of its activities. We do it in several ways. Of course, people are familiar with the scholarships, but more than the scholarships. For instance, one of our major undertakings is to build capacities in oil and gas related departments in Nigerian universities across the country. So far, we have done that in several universities. I think as of last count, we have done that in about 26 universities and in various fields of the petroleum value chain, from geology, geophysics, gas engineering, petroleum engineering, reservoir management, including support programs like uh, petroleum law and accounting, and many. What policy makers and those who implement such policies aim for is a situation where Nigeria oil and gas activities happen in an atmosphere devoid of rancor, yet promoting participation that enhances local content. But there could be obstacles to fair participation in oil and gas for the local content provider. Inadequate funds could, for instance, come between wish and ability. The Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, is yet another department of the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Its Executive Secretary, 
engineer Simbi Wabote talks about enabling funds for the Nigerian local content provider at an interest rate he or she can afford. It is not government fund that is being a no. It is a contribution by the contractors and the international oil companies and the local oil companies. So that's where the fund is that coming from. Is important I think it is, it is very <laughs> key. And, and then what is the fund meant to support? Yeah. A, you have five schemes with which the fund uh, is running on. Uh, one is the project financing. Uh, most Nigerians, when they get projects uh, from the oil and gas sector, Financing those projects is a, is, a, is a huge challenge. So that fund will come in to finance part of the project. Uh, secondly, it's to set up manufacturing capacity within the oil and gas sector. There is a lot of opportunity out there, but there is no funding to support uh, such just manufacturing. And then the third aspect uh, of it uh, itself is equipment financing. Uh, because when contractors get jobs, uh, they want to buy new equipment for the job and then the funding yeah, is not awesome. there. So uh, the NCDA, NC, NCIF yeah. is meant to also support that. And then the fourth one yeah. is refinancing. Uh, most uh, oil and gas uh, contractors have obtained uh, bank loans of uh, staggering interest rates. Staggering. Uh, some of it is it's, 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 <laughs> it's killing. It is. <laughs> so there is an opportunity to refinance some of those Sorry. loans with the commercial bank with this uh, fund. Mm -hmm. And of course the fifth one is, is the community contractor financing, uh, which is also part of the scheme. Uh, and then on all those four that I mentioned, yeah. um, it has a $10 million uh, maximum that a particular contractor can borrow, uh, five-year uh, tenure. tenure, and then it also has 8% interest, interest rate, rate as such. But for the community contractor financing, uh, you have a maximum of 20 million naira. There is ongoing effort to extend the scope to commercial banks so as to enhance the capital base of the Nigerian Content Intervention Fund, NCIF, and push forward the level of impact of the activities of the local content board. The Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, is on the other hand, the body which supervises the price regime of petroleum products. The agency's executive secretary, Alaji Abdul Kadir Seidu, explains the pivotal role the body plays in keeping the wheels of the economy turning. PPPRA was established by an Act of National Assembly, which is Act No. 8 of May 2003. It has the following key mandates, amongst others. To determine the pricing policy of petroleum products. To regulate the supply and distribution of petroleum products. To create an information data bank through liaising with all relevant agencies to facilitate the making of informed, realistic decisions in pricing policies. The PPPRA continues solid cooperation with other departments and agencies to make the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources a number one service provider and the joy of millions of Nigerian homes. Yet another parastatal of the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources is the Petroleum Training Institute, PTI, located in Efuru, Wari. It is the point where technical knowledge to operate in the oil and gas industry is handed out to students. The subject areas are therefore science inclined. Professor Sani Yuke is the chief executive of this oil and gas sector servicing institution. Things have been changing. We begin, if you go to the campus, you will see, new, you will see structures going, coming up, structures rehabilitated, and as we speak, things are going on, people are working. So I really want to use the opportunity to thank them for the good job they are doing. I think they should continue. In addition, the minister had called myself, chief executive of PTI, the executive secretary of PTDF, and executive secretary of NCDMB, that we should collaborate, work together. To, uh, to ensure that the manpower required for the oil sector is beefed up so that Nigeria doesn't have to import it. 
uh, I mean, an expatriate to do what we, what we need we to do in do the it. country. In some ways, the job of the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority, NNRA, plays a major role, as explained here by the Director General of the Authority, Professor Lawrence Anikwe Dim. We are regulators, so we protect the Nigerian people. Nigerian people should trust us because we are meant to inform them and protect them from the, value. From value the harmful us. effect of ionizing radiation. Many Nigerians do not understand we hear that Nigeria has petroleum. Mm -hmm. It is through this particular um, technique, okay. nuclear science and technology, yeah. that you can determine where there is petroleum in the soil. That you can determine, even after petroleum has been um, gotten out, the upstream and downstream nuclear science and technology is very important in all this. So it is the nuclear science and technology that you use, both in the in finding the mineral itself. I am not here now to explain how that is done, but that is what you use. In moving it, when it has become a finished product, moving it, nuclear science and technology also is very important. No doubt, future and current prospecting for hydrocarbons will have the NNRA in its team list. The Petroleum Equalization Fund Management Board, PEFMB, another agency of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, can best be described as the body that ensures that fair is fair in the cost of distributing petroleum products across the country. This is easily understood from the fact that if the official prices of products are to be adhered to, marketers should not be made to bear the financial burden of transporting them to whichever part of the country they are needed. Executive Secretary of the Funds Management Board, Dr. Ahmed Boboy, is clear about how the board ensures that the task is carried out effectively. Petroleum Equalization Fund Management Board has been existing for over 40 years. And uh, considering the criticality of the product that we deal with, petroleum products, we all benefit from petroleum products one way or another. People who transport their goods, people transport themselves around, they use petroleum products in the vehicles that they transport, either themselves or the goods around. Now, the cost of transportation impacts on the economy in so many ways. Now, PEF, by paying marketers for losses incurred by them so that it will cover the transportation cost for the marketers, makes the product reach all corners of the country. And uh, it makes it accessible to the consumers. It makes it affordable to the consumers. And if this is done, then there is positive impact on the economy because PEF now manages the transportation aspect of moving the product around in an organized manner because we have charts that have been agreed by the stakeholders by, uh, clearly uh, stating the rates for each distance that is covered. And in this case, we have three different schemes. Uh, these schemes are related in a way. We have the equalization scheme, we have the bridging scheme, we have the inter-district scheme. And now to the Directorate of Petroleum Resources, DPR, whose job in a nutshell is, so to speak, the policeman of Nigeria's oil industry, right from exploration to dispensing of products. The DPR director, Modekai Dantani Baba Ladan, speaks about a department whose duties are so compelling that his staff just have to sit up to get the job done. Monitoring role goes as far as uh, monitoring right from when the seismic uh, activities of, uh, of the petroleum as for search of petroleum uh, yes. starts uh, right down to, to the production of crude oil, as I said earlier, and then down to the refining of this crude oil at the refinery. So we have uh, DPR 
representatives uh, monitoring these activities 24-7. And uh, we also cover the monitoring of sales of petroleum products at the retail outlets. And retail outlets, I would say, for now, we have registered about 39,000 of uh, retail outlets, the petrol filling stations okay. across the nation. 39,000. Uh, 39, we also uh, go as far as monitoring the distribution, lifting of petroleum products from the depots to the petrol filling station. And depots in Nigeria today, we have about 210 of such depots registered in the country. Uh, we uh, go as far as also um, monitoring the uh, distribution of um, gas, uh, both for export and uh, domestic use, yes. and so on and so forth. So every facet of the uh, oil and gas industry is monitored by this agency. And we have our officers in these areas to monitor such activities. The Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources can be referred to as a family of key operators whose varying activities synergize to post a good result about commitment, sense of duty, and patriotic zeal. Minister of State in the Ministry, Ibe Kachiku, sums up projections for the Ministry at a time when the activities of Nigeria's main foreign exchange earner are central to the country's development index. Um, we need to find the right timing. This may not be the right timing, I do concede. But we need to find the right timing to just let the sector grow. Uh, if, if you let it go in terms of liberalization, you will have huge investment potentials. Refineries will work. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, pipelines will take off as a business model on their own right. Um, but, but more important, the oil industry needs to begin to move away from the typical business model of fine oil, take it, take it out, to fine oil, process it, find a market for it, and begin to implant efficiencies. Uh, we, must, we must open up the industry and stop monopoly wherever it exists. But any place where we see monopoly, we must break it. Because the more Nigerians get into a place, the more labor we employ, the more opportunities, the more the costs are drilled down. Uh, this con the oil is the future of this country, and when people say we need to move away from it, yes we do, but we need to get it right in the process of moving away from it. The vision is clear. The assignment set out. The competent staff of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources are ready to keep justifying the confidence the country reposes in them.